Hello there YouTube, Joel from Joneses here, and today I'm gonna show you guys a little secret on how we make radiator hoses for our diesel swaps. Stay tuned for that video next. We get a lot of questions as to uh, what, what radiator hoses do you use in your um, common swaps, your LS swaps, all of the, all the conversions that we do. And my uh, answer is always <clears throat> a uh, set of generic 90 degree bends. This one happens to be a Gates part number 20957. And this one right here is a 20357. And the difference in those two hoses has to do with the leg length um, after the 90 degree bend. So here you can see we've got uh, this 90 degree bend kind of hooked up to our upper radiator <clears throat> inlet. And we have this short bend hose hooked up to our water outlet of our Cummins. And they are, this one's coming out kind of this angle and this one's coming straight out. And so the question is, well, how do you, how do you get from this point to this point? And the way we do it, is we make a custom uh, crossover tube. And the cool thing about doing a custom crossover tube is that if your radiator, let's say, is a small size, an inch and a half inlet, and your water outlet is a bigger size, two inch or inch and three quarter, like in our case, you can actually make this tube and have it be an adapter as well. So how do you make, how do we make that tube? Well, it starts out, with bending a piece of wire. And here you can see see our wire. I just start out with a straight piece of welding wire and we bend it so that it goes from the center of this tube or the center of this radiator hose over to the center of that radiator hose. Okay, so you bend it, and you want when you bend this, you want to make these bends um, kind of as, as crisp and clean as possible so that when you transfer it over to your pipe, the bends are easy to measure between them. So you want to measure from this bend to this bend, and then from this bend to this bend, and transfer that over to a piece of straight tubing. So you can see my Sharpie mark here, my Sharpie mark here, and my Sharpie mark there. And so after you've done that, and I always leave these legs long so that you can trim them accordingly. After you do that, you use the actual wire on an exhaust bender, or you take, you take your your bent wire, your nice bent wire over to your exhaust shop, your favorite exhaust guy. And then he, um, he'll know exactly what you need. You, you bend it and then you can get all of the offsets from this wire using this wire as the template. Hopefully that makes sense. It's probably a little bit harder to uh, describe than, than to, to show. So here's the piece after we, we bent it and you can see the the die marks from the exhaust bend and then the sharpie marks that mark the center line of the bend. So we'll go ahead and put this in. And I always roll a bead on the end so that it holds the hose better. You can see I've got that on there. And then it's just a matter of, of kind of assembling the pipe in the hose and then trimming the hose and or the pipe accordingly for what your application is. And after you get your hose completely test fit and you're happy with exactly how it's gonna uh, <clears throat> lay in there, and you don't need to make any other modifications, I like to use the Gates uh, Power Grip shrink wrap style hose clamps on the tube section so that that essentially creates like a hose assembly. So now that we've got it, we're happy with the fit without losing our, our clocking or our indexing. We take this guy out and we're gonna go ahead and put the shrink wrap style hose clamps on our newly fabricated crossover tube. So I'm gonna take these part numbers off, slip the hose clamps 
on. And the nice thing, the cool thing about doing it this way, using just kind of generic, generic 90 degree bent hoses, is that you really don't need to carry a whole lot of extra spare hoses. Like if you're building an off-road rig or overlanding rig or something like that that's custom, you can just carry a generic 90 degree bent hose with long enough legs to go in any position so that if you have, if you have issues, it's one hose. All right, so I got the, I got those off. I want to put the power grip pose clamps on and the way you, way you get these out of the, their little holders is you just bend that like that, get this guy and usually should have slipped these on before, but they, they go on pretty easily like that. Gates has a, a little cheat sheet chart uh, to look up the size, the shrink size of these, this style clamp. And then when you put, when you put these shrink wrap style clamps on, I'm gonna re-index this. You want the shrink wrap portion to go right over the bubble on your your tube. So double check my clocking one last time. Like that. You can reach in there and you can feel where your bubble is. You position those uh, shrink wrap style hose clamps right, right over the bubble. These hose clamps um, are considered a constant tension. And to get them set, you just use a heat gun, making sure that their positions correctly. It takes quite a bit of heat actually to, uh, to shrink these down. And after you have got them shrunk down, you can pull this off and you have just created a custom upper radiator hose. Now, the next step is I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm actually gonna trim this excess off. I have this hose clamp positioned right over the bead right there and then onto the straight tube and I don't need all of this excess. So it makes it look a lot cleaner if you can terminate your hose uh, after the clamp just right about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut that down. And then the very last step is I'm gonna paint all of this crossover tube a satin black so that it looks like it's a completely uh, molded hose. And we will only use <clears throat> the regular worm type uh, hose clamps on the uh, ends so that you can take this, take this piece off as a complete assembly.